basically uh, we designed this uh, this object to be a uh, um, uh, a performance and live oriented uh, uh, product uh, many the, the most part actually of the sun machines lines is uh, is uh, is uh, conceived with this in mind so uh, in this case uh, we think that this is the this will be the most powerful uh, user interface for a modular or other kind of synthesizer I well uh, we, we don't we don't we don't make a mystery about the inspiration of this kind of surfaces uh, lately I will be I was uh, I was looking at uh, several uh, performances uh, made with uh, with the the, 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 the thunder from Bukla interface that uh, is uh, basically uh, a set of uh, sliders, pads, and uh, and uh, uh, many uh, and many elements, many user interface elements that are uh, being uh, um, configured in a way to have a, a, a fairly uh, musical and uh, performance-oriented uh, uh, aspect. Uh, and so we try to build up from that level and uh, to propose something that was both more powerful and also more easy to use. Uh, as you may imagine, there is a lot going on into uh, a, a, an interface like that. And so uh, the first thing that you notice is that we have a, on the right hand panel a miniature of the whole control surfaces. Uh, this miniature allows you to select very quickly the element that you want to configure with an encoder that will be here in this hole at the moment and uh, then uh, by choosing uh, uh, the four subset of functions that are gate, gate or triggers, the note, uh, the auxiliary uh, function that normally is the pressure or the position of the finger on the surface and then another uh, F brackets that is a, a, a potential other function that will uh, that we come uh, in, a, in a second moment and then you just change with another with another uh, um, encoder the parameter uh, there is a small display here in this uh, in this uh, in this position there will be a small OLED display uh, like the one that we use into our Bri A1 brain interface and in this display you, you will see all the information related to the configuration that you are carrying on or related to the preset that you are using. Uh, another uh, great feature of the arches will be that uh, uh, each uh, situation, configuration set for every parameter of every element in the user interface uh, could be saved into a, a, a um, uh, a preset or a, a program uh, that you can just uh, choose by using the load and save button or navigate during a performance uh, by using the two buttons at the at the at the far ends of the of the control surfaces uh, as you can see everything has been uh, put down uh, having in having in mind the uh, dimension of uh, the classic Eurorack stuff uh, to be really uh, ergonomic uh, so you will have two uh, X, Y and pressure sensitive pads uh, under your thumbs under your under both of your thumbs uh, and uh, where are where your finger uh, lays you have uh, at a really uh, good distance, uh, all the sliders and uh, uh, the auxiliary sliders, the pressure sensitive buttons and uh, uh, the sequencer and arpeggiator buttons that are these four here. Let's, let's talk in a, about what you find on the surface. Basically, you have two, uh, the, 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 the aforementioned uh, XY pads. Those are capacitive pads, really uh, sensitive. Uh, you just have to uh, touch slightly the surface. And, uh, and uh, uh, on uh, uh, a set of dedicated output, you will have uh, 
out uh, con 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 continuously the the X epsilon and Z uh, 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 levels uh, uh, put put on the output. Uh, you can associate a gate pulse for per each of this one, so you can also play some percussive stuff with this, and uh, you can have a, a old function. So you will, uh, uh, without the old function, the normal situation is that uh, the, the the output of the X and Y will be zero. Uh, with the hold, uh, it will retain the last uh, the last uh, it, the, the last uh, the last value, the last position of your finger, obviously. Then you uh, you have basically eight light strips here. Each of these light strips, apart from being obviously uh, a potential source of uh, note and, uh, and other stuff, you can also uh, associate the eighth step of a sequencer and uh, the, 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 the advanced functionality is that they retain the functionality of the LS1, so you can record and play in loop uh, the position of your finger. Uh, so you can use, for example, an eight-step sequencer with uh, uh, changing steps. Uh, not only sequencer, you can also uh, set everything to function as a keyboard. So to each element you can associate a note uh, with uh, obviously also other parameters like pressures and uh, velocity, etc. Um, these four smaller sliders are exactly the same as the other, but they do not have the uh, record and replay function. And uh, uh, finally, we have the eight button on the top row <coughs> that are sensor pressure, uh, sorry, uh, pressure sensitive uh, uh, capability. Uh, for example, in, in, in one in one uh, in, in one configuration, you can have uh, uh, the two the two pads here that are behaving like uh, like two LP1 light planes. Uh, you can have a small keyboard uh, composed of uh, 12, 12, uh, uh, 12 keys, twelve notes that are the eight and uh, the four on the on the on the far ends and uh, you can have another keyboard with uh, other eight notes selected uh, on which maybe you are running an arpeggiator and you can route this all all this uh, to to different outputs as you can see here we have a lot of outputs we have up to 24 different outputs excluding the the fixed outputs of the two pads so you have a, a really uh, big quantity of possibility to configure this uh, surface to suit all, all your needs in terms of performance. Um, basically, I, I waited because uh, I want to have a first prototype running uh, before starting the, the Kickstarter phase just to uh, just to be very uh, serious about that, and uh, the other thing that we put uh, maybe as an extended uh, an extended target in the crowdfunding is to have a wireless Bluetooth MIDI interface, so you can uh, interface directly, for example, if with with an application or a soft synthesizer that you have on your PC on your iPad, without having to be near. The, the equipment and without having to run wires. Okay, we um, okay. Let's let's talk, uh, yeah. So let's talk about timing. Uh, we just received the PCB, so uh, and in uh, I, I think mid May or at the end of May we will have the prototype running, and uh, we will tell you everything about uh, availability, pricing, etc. Um, as a rule of thumb, uh, this should be around the cost of the modular so it will be around eight or nine hundred euros uh, during the campaign uh, then the, the price will probably have a, a premium added to it for the for the for the normal market product but we are not sure about this i mean these are just our projections right now so uh, one thing that i forgot this would be compatible also with bukla levels uh, so you can basically choose for each element and each note exactly the voltage that we, that is uh, that is uh, coming out when you push the 
uh, the button. Um, there will be a micro SD card for upgrades and saving of presets and also uh, we will probably make uh, a version with banana connectors. Thanks to Audio Newsroom for the opportunity to, to show, uh, yeah, for the first time, <laughs> this, uh, this product. Thank you.